Hey everybody, it's Infinite Drift, and welcome back to the Survival Let's Play series. In the last episode, we left off by building a coop for our little friends over here, which they really seem to be enjoying, so that's good. And earlier on in the episode, we obtained a really important item for the game, the enchanting table. So, since we now have this table, I thought we would start today's episode off by building an enchanting room so we can start using it and getting upgrades for our gear. So in the last episode, I mentioned that I wanted to build the enchanting room underneath this mountain in a cave that I would dig out and have the enchanting table kind of like hidden and nestled in here somewhere. However, I kind of did something similar on the Imperial SMP, so I kind of thought maybe I should go with a different idea. So while I was walking around the base, I found this little spot right behind this little like pond here, and I thought if I chopped down the trees here, what I could do is place the enchanting table here and kind of build like a custom tree over top of it and have like a nice little overgrown forested area for the enchanting table. So yeah, I really like the alternative idea that I've come up with. It'll still have like the natural vibe to it. And yeah, I think it's gonna look really cool. So what we need for this is we need to get a bunch of our bookshelves ready, which I already have a lot of paper and a lot of leather that I've gotten for this. I wanted to do a little bit of it off camera just because I was like, this is gonna take forever. So I got most of it ready. So with that, we've got 18 books. So far we have six bookshelves and maybe, maybe we can get a little bit more leather and a little bit more paper and we can have the full set of 15 bookshelves that we need for this. So yeah, I think the idea of a custom tree kind of hanging above the enchanting table is going to look really cool. Um, I've done one custom tree so far that was with block down in the last episode of Imperial and it's pretty tricky because it's kind of hard to make organic shapes in this game, but it's a really fun challenge and I think it's going to turn out really, really good. You all probably saw this before and I've mentioned it many times where I made the mistake of putting the sheep and the cows together. I kind of started getting rid of some of the sheep. So what I think I'm I'm gonna do see there's one hanging around right here I think I'm gonna use the old chicken pen to kind of have the sheep chilling in there until we build a proper barn so I'm gonna do that before we feed the cows come here buddy you're gonna come to your new home you're the first member of the new home yay welcome all right let's go find one more sheep and solve this problem once and for all and there's one right here there's actually two you know what this was really easy your new home awaits and don't worry I am not charging rent I will actually Actually feed you for free in exchange for your wool. Your new home awaits if you follow me this way. There we go. All right, we'll feed you. Thank you. Enjoy your new home, and I will enjoy gathering lots of wool from you. All right, that means these two, since it's really bothering me and I don't want to accidentally feed them. Three? I didn't even realize there were three. Oh no. You are going to meet your untimely demise. I'm sorry. I have to. I have to keep this organized, otherwise, it's going to drive me mad. There. All right, all cows now, it's all organized. I feel a lot better. So let's breed these cows and get a little bit more leather if we can, and hopefully we can get closer to 15. All right, leather time. There we go, eight. That should be enough for now, I think. Got eight books, so that'll give us another two bookshelves, which is great. So we're at eight now. I feel like by the time we're done building the tree, it's gonna take a while. We can harvest some more um, sugar cane. We can feed the cows a little bit more, so we should be good. All right, let's of course start off by getting a little station set up here so we can put all our things down and have them all organized. I have these stations like spread all across. I think I still have the one of the chicken coop set up over there. I have the one by the tree over here, the one in front of the house. <laughs> I need to actually clean them up because they're all just hanging around. So I'm going to put all this stuff away first. All right, let me gather a couple extra leaves. So we've got tons of leaves. Uh, let's put this stuff away for now. I think what we're going to mainly need is a couple spruce logs to start. And of course, because I forgot the main component, we're going to run back and grab the enchanting table. <laughs> What else is new? I'm, I'm always forgetting something. So let's grab this real quick, bring it over here with us, and we'll stash it away in the chest here. All right, let's start by chopping all these trees down behind me and seeing what space we have to work with. 
We can always plant some of these back after, which we probably will, or maybe even make like smaller custom trees as well surrounding the enchanting table. But it's always good to clear away a little bit of extra space just so you can see what you're working with because you can always replant the trees back after anyway. So let's just get rid of them all for now. And then when you place them, you can place them in spots where you know it's not gonna obstruct the view or just get in the way or anything. You have more control that way. All right, now that the trees are mostly cleared away, I have a better sense of what this space looks like and honestly it's the perfect spot. I think I am actually going to flatten out this piece to make it level here just because I want the enchanting table to kind of sit a little bit lower. I want I don't want to walk up to it. I want it to be in line with us especially with the tree that's going to be here. I don't want it to sit too high so I think I'm going to flatten out this area real quickly and then we'll start building. Imagine how nice it's going to be once we have enchanted tools though because right now this basic iron shovel <laughs> This is taking a long time. All right, three shovels later and approximately eight stacks of dirt. We have flattened land over here. Now that I've opened up this space, I really love the view of this lake over here as well. And I'm just looking at all of the other potential areas that we could expand apart from our base over this way. And I just love it. It looks so good. So these are pretty much all the materials I'm gonna be starting with. I might add more later, but we'll kind of see as we go along because I'm freestyling this one a little bit. So you can see that we have two different types of spruce wood. We have the spruce logs and the actual blocks of spruce wood. We're going to be using these mainly for branches. I also just kept these planks aside just in case we need them for something. The fencing and the gates are going to be used as branches and twigs and stuff like that. And we have a whole pile of leaves. And I think I'm going to decorate the area with a lot of cobblestone. Ideally, what I really would have liked to have is mossy cobblestone, except we don't have any vines or moss blocks yet, so I'm unable to make it at the moment. Um, I really love using mossy cobblestone for builds and it's something that I'm definitely lacking in right now So we're gonna have to go on an adventure soon and find that because I find that it definitely adds to the builds Especially if we're doing something that's kind of in like an enchanted forest and it's all overgrown and stuff I think it's like a necessity to have so we are gonna start things off by placing the actual Enchanting table in the spot that we want so I'm gonna have to leave a fair bit of space behind it because that's where the custom tree is gonna be going and it's gonna be quite big it's gonna look almost like a weeping willow I want it to have like a big trunk and have leaves overgrown and hanging over the enchanting spot so let's say we put it about right about here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna line the bookshelves probably around this area kind of like this for now we're gonna stack them on different levels and stuff like that once we get more so we'll place them here for now and ideally what I want is I want them to all kind of have like random levels levels and stuff but we don't have enough for that eat just yet so I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and place the tree trunk so we're gonna place it right here and it's gonna be four blocks and as you can see I placed it just left of the enchanting table mainly because I want the tree trunk to sit here while the leaves frame the actual enchanting table you'll kind of see what I mean once it's built but if you do it this way instead of it hanging over in the middle it's gonna look just like a huge clump of blocks in the center so if you do it this way you'll have something right Right here on the left of it to kind of frame it nicely and have the leaves kind of hang over naturally. So organic objects can be kind of tricky to build in this game to make it look natural. Um, the trick is to kind of just messily place blocks I would say in some ways. So we've got a little base here. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna start building upwards and we'll start like this and we'll just build the tree up just a little bit randomly for now. And the best thing to do honestly while building really anything is just to take a a step back and see how it looks and see how you can improve it from afar. So this thing's gonna have to go a little bit higher I think. We'll go to about here and maybe what I'll do now is take a step back and see how it looks. So that's about five to seven blocks high. That looks pretty good. You don't want it going too high up, otherwise it's just gonna sit way too high above the enchanting table and the leaves will never droop down naturally. So I think this is pretty good so far. So what I'm gonna do next to um, kind of give it more shape and life is start adding extra logs around the edges here, just to kind of give the illusion of having kind of like roots and stuff like that and more of an overgrown trunk. So even with these pieces, for some of them, 
some you can go up a little bit higher. You can keep some just one high as well. Maybe even in the ground you could put some right here to have the illusion of like roots growing down. Even a little bit further away from the tree because if it's a really overgrown tree it would have really deep roots as well, right? And then we can fill this in with like leaves, foliage, and other things after. So we'll just kind of keep going around, building things up, trying to make it look as natural as possible. The more random it looks, the more organic it's going to look. All right, so we've got what looks like a little bit of like an unnatural staircase going up like this. So maybe what I'll do is I'll shave some off right here kind of bring some of this back down and maybe I'll take like a little chunk out of here since it's an older tree it might have a little bit more wear and tear to it so yeah this is the shape that we're left with for the tree trunk you might have to play with block placement a little bit kind of like what I did just take a step back and see what you're left with after you place a couple but like I said before start off with a base of four blocks and kind of just like work your way around and work your way up having less blocks as you work your way up all right and now we're on to the next part which honestly I would argue is a little bit trickier, the branches. So branches on a tree kind of twist and turn every which way and kind of like shoot out in different directions. So we basically have to copy that with blocks. So for the branches, we're going to be using spruce wood, um, mainly because like I said before, on branches, you're not going to want this texture of the inside of the log coming out from the tree. It just wouldn't really make sense. You want this texture on all sides. So for the branches, the best way to do it is to kind of visualize how branches on a tree look and visualize the fact that they sprout out from the tree trunk pretty much every which way in different directions so you can have a couple of starting branches coming out from the trunk like this since we want an overhang for the enchanting table maybe I can have it kind of branch out this way a bit and have it go up and like this maybe we can have the next branch coming out this way up and going the opposite direction. And what you can even do so you don't have too many wood blocks is you can kind of get rid of pieces that connect here and they still look like they're connecting. So it's not super awkward and we can replace that eventually with leaves. So we'll do the same for this one. We'll remove some of the connecting pieces and it's okay because they're still touching. So it looks natural still and it won't be as bulky. So let's just build a couple of basic branches and then we'll take a step back and see how it looks. And as you can see, some are, I'm gonna have some twist different ways like this, going up, I'll have some starting at the bottom here, and I'm just gonna try to twist them as best as I can in different directions, kind of removing the pieces that are connecting too, just because it'll look nice when you fill those with leaves instead, just every so often. And maybe you can even have a couple pieces branching from the actual stem that you have here as well. It's all about trying to make it look as random as possible. So you can even have some kind of branching down as well, well, and let's connect one to the trunk of the tree here. I want this one to kind of maybe like twist up a bit just to give the tree a little bit more height because I have a feeling that right now it's really flat looking. We'll take a look at it after. And yeah, I'm going for the look of an older tree. So I feel like the more I twist it and make like interesting turns and stuff like that, it'll make sense just because this thing is so old. It's probably very, very overgrown. We can always remove pieces if they don't look right either. That's the best part. So this is looking good so far because I kind of wanted the tree to slump to the right a bit and overhang mostly on this side. However, I think we're missing a few blocks on the left right here because once we start filling this in, you can already visualize it. Wherever you're placing these branches is pretty much where you're gonna be placing the leaves. So you can kind of see that it's a little bit too heavy on this side as opposed to this side. So we kind of need to balance it out a bit somewhere in the middle, just so it looks a little bit more like a natural curve rather than having a clump of leaves here and then just like a small clump here. Always take a step back to make sure you're going in the right direction especially um, because this is pretty much gonna tell you where your leaves are gonna fall we'll just keep going with it just gonna make some of these branches come out a little bit further and since I want a little bit of overhang I'm gonna try placing some of the branches out like this and a little bit lower just so they'll reach the enchanting table so I think I need a couple of more branches kind of coming down here and we'll just kind of offshoot them from one another just because I want a nice canopy over the enchanting table. So I'll remove some of these blocks 
right here. So I think what I said before was we were missing like a couple of branches in this spot. It was just looking a little bit too sparse in terms of the balance because we have a ton of height here. So what I'm gonna do is just add maybe a little bit more height going this way and just off shooting here. All right, I feel like that's looking good. The only thing right here, I don't like that L shape that looks a little bit too unnatural. So I think I'm gonna get rid of the little middle piece right there. And then we just need to fill in a little bit right here because it's looking a bit too sparse sparse but other than that you can kind of see what I mean where removing some of the connecting pieces it still looks like a branch and it's going to give you a lot more room to breathe and a lot more places to place the leaves it's it'll look a lot more natural and less clunky all right let's remove this piece and we got to place a little bit right here so maybe something like problem is I'm getting too many blocks here but something like this and then remove this middle piece because these two are kind of connected now maybe even this one and that should be good all right I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more height to the center of the tree because I have a feeling this flat line right here won't look as natural so I'm just gonna add one more branch up here and we'll be done so this piece is already pretty high what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna connect it like this have it go up a little bit and I think that should be good that's pretty much the center of the tree which looked like it had a couple issues so maybe I'll have a branch going from here and another one going from here so we can connect some leaves and I think that should be okay all right the basic structure of the tree is complete and I would say that it looks really good with all of these branches kind of like shooting out from every which way now we have a good template to place our leaves we're also going to be adding spruce fences and spruce gates just to act as like smaller branches shooting out from the main ones so so you can kind of place them anywhere. Like I said, it's an organic structure, so it's random. I would just kind of place them towards the ends of each branch that you have here, just in various spots. And you can also kind of place them along the trunk too, just to add a little bit of texture towards the bottom as well. So now you can see these look kind of like smaller branches and it just gives the tree a lot more texture and a lot more life to it, I think. So I feel like that's a good start. We can always add more if we want to later in different spots, but yeah, like I said, before just don't go too overboard with them but you definitely want some hanging around just to give extra texture and detail to the tree all right now that that's done it's time to take our leaves and we are going to start fluffing leaves around the branches that we've made so i feel like this is the easy part because you already have your template for how your tree is going to look laid out because you have the branches placed so all you're really going to be doing is placing leaves in the spots around the branches just to fill it all in and pretty much make it a tree <laughs> So when you place your leaves, you don't have to fill in every single spot around the branches. You can actually have empty gaps in between just because when you're looking up at a tree, you do see gaps naturally. So if you leave spots when you're filling it in, it's just gonna look a lot more natural and less bulky. So you can see I can like leave spots like this right here. Maybe I can just add leaves down here instead. And we'll just fill in around the branches that we've created. If we need to add more in spots that do look a little bit too sparse, we can always add more. So we're just filling in on all the sides leaving a couple gaps here and there just so the tree can breathe a little bit more and also another detail that I wanted to add was actually lanterns on some of the branches especially if you were planning on leaving those spots empty anyway so you can just fill them with lanterns and it'll be a nice pop of light so we're gonna close off places like this maybe leave a little bit of room here so the light can come through so the best part about this is if you notice that something looks a little bit too heavy or a little bit too sparse you can always add or subtract from the tree it's pretty easy to make changes as you go along. Maybe have this piece come out a little bit further. <laughs> I keep saying I'm done with the structure, but every time I'm up here, I'm like, hmm, what if I do this instead? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to go overboard sometimes but sometimes you do see things that might look a little bit better as you go along and that's always okay don't be afraid to add things as well it's good to just go with the flow this spot right here is looking a little bit thin I can already see it it looks like a little bit carved out because I don't think I added enough branches here so what I'm gonna do is maybe attach some branches quickly to this piece just so I can fill in this spot we'll have this one come out a little bit further add some leaves here and then don't forget to add leaves to the bottom of the branches here towards the trunk as well. So you can kind of see already when you're looking up in some of the spots, it's a little bit sparse looking and you can kind of see the sky through the tree, which is good because especially when you're going out towards the branches, it's not going to be as heavy as towards the center of the tree, right? Right, and just add a couple around the bottom here as well. 
And we're just gonna add a couple of branches up here just to even out, whoops, the height of the tree. Cause in the center, there was a lot of height here, but it wasn't kind of going towards the right side. And I feel like we just needed to add a little bit more height to it. I find my biggest struggle is to not overfill with leaves. <laughs> Because I'm just like, I need to fill in all the gaps to make it look right. And you do have to fill in some gaps, but sometimes I think I go a little bit too overboard. But it's always best just to like kind of take a step back and look at what you've got. Which honestly, this is looking really good so far. Okay, and around this part of the enchanting table, I might have to add a couple in after. But I think I want the leaves to kind of droop down over the enchanting table. Because I want this to look almost like a willow tree in some ways. So the leaves are going to have to hang down. That's why I really need to get vines but this is good for now I think we can always add to it later and I'm gonna add a couple lanterns to the trunk of the tree all right so I think I'm pretty much done filling in this tree it's hard to know when to stop because it's such a random organic structure that you could probably just like keep tweaking it forever but like I said before you do want gaps in the tree I'll show you all how to make smaller custom trees because with this one when I'm talking about seeing through the tree when you look up it's a little bit different for this because I'm going for a little little bit bigger of a build and an older tree so I feel like it would be a lot more full in some ways however you can kind of see up in the tree through here what I mean let's take a step back and look at what we've got that floating block <laughs> It's driving me nuts. All right, no, this looks really good. I really like it. It's pretty much the exact shape that I wanted. I did have to add a couple of branches as I was filling in the leaves just because I kind of noticed that it was starting to take like a little bit of an awkward shape where it coned up and then like down too much. It needed more of a natural flow going down this way, which I think we did achieve actually. I really love the look of it. So like I said, it's I'm trying to imitate kind of like the feel of a willow tree almost with like hanging leaves. I really really need to get vines though um that'll definitely complete the look of it so yeah it's a little bit more full than you kind of normally would if you're doing a tree about this size but I think that's okay because it's such a large tree and it's a lot older so I think it should have more leaves and yeah I think that's pretty much the look we were trying to achieve with it it looks really good and I love the way that it overhangs and kind of frames the enchanting table which is exactly what I wanted what I'm gonna do now one last touch is we're gonna add some gates to the leaves and basically what what these are going to do is they're going to look like tiny pieces of branches similar to these fences. They're just going to kind of like poke from the leaves and give like a little bit more texture to it. So what you do with these is you just place the gate and then you open it up and it'll look like little twigs. So just kind of like, I don't know, place them anywhere, even kind of within the tree, a few on the outside, kind of wherever you think you need them. All right, so we've added them in. You can see it just adds that little bit of extra detail. You got some twigs popping out of the tree. I think it looks really good. It's such a nice little addition. And yeah, I think that this tree is looking real good. So now that we have our tree done, all we have to do is decorate the pathway around it and we're pretty much done. All right, so now for the path that we're gonna make for the enchanted forest I went with a pretty simple palette and it's gonna be gravel cobblestone and regular stone cobble and regular stone obviously always go together really well I like the contrast and textures and they're the same color tone and all that stuff gravel has a little bit of a pink color tone to it but I like the look of the three together I think they complement each other really well the gravel will just kind of use as an, a little bit of an accent block though we're not going to use it fully throughout the path so when you're making paths it's always good to have a little bit of a block palette whether it's even only just two blocks that you're interchanging or three I don't usually go more than three I think four is a little bit too much then it just becomes a little bit too busy unless you have four blocks that look very very similar there are things that you could actually add to this like maybe even stone bricks and stuff like that so it's not necessarily a bad thing to have four but I like to keep it to around three three if I can. But it's always good to have some sort of block palette to build your paths and even your structures with just because I find that when you interchange blocks that look similar but a little bit different it just adds a lot of interest and texture and life to your builds. So I'll show you quickly what I mean with adding texture and how it helps bring your builds to life a little bit. So I'm gonna just dig out a little bit of a basic path right here on the enchanting table and I'm gonna fill it with just cobble. And you can see like it looks good it's it's fine but I find that let's say we start replacing some of this cobble with a little bit of stone
down and you'll see that it just adds a little bit more interest and it really just kind of adds a little bit more realism in a way because pathing usually paths aren't necessarily always just one type of texture right so once you start adding that in in random various spots it just adds a little bit more interest to your path so that's basically what we're going to be going with and then we'll be adding in the gravel kind of around the edges. So with this path, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start digging out a path that goes from here, kind of starting to wrap around the lake over here. So I usually have my paths run around three wide. They can be wider sometimes depending on what you're building, but I think three is pretty good. It's like a pretty good standard to have. And what I like to do is I like to kind of naturally curve my paths to kind of fit with the landscape that we have have because if I just ran a path straight down here and then just had a right turn at the end it wouldn't look very natural and it honestly wouldn't add a lot of interest to the landscape if you start curving it it starts making it look a lot more natural and also just like it adds more visual interest so right around here you can see that the pond starts to curve a bit so we can start bending our path and curving it to the shape of the pond I'm just starting to bend it out this way and eventually we've reached the point where it can start to connect with the house so now you can see we have a little bit of a pathway that kind of bends and curves a little bit and it just has different lines running down. So when you walk down the path, instead of just running here and then sharply turning, you're going to have a nice path to walk down that will lead you right to the enchanting table with natural curves and bends and stuff. So we're just going to fill in the path with cobble now and I'm just going to fill it in in random spots and then start placing the stone afterwards. Just try to make random shapes as random as possible. If some things kind of look too uniform you can always just take it down and replace it with a different type of block. Let's fill it in with stone and we'll see how it looks afterwards. All right so this is the texture of our path and I think it's looking really good. I kind of like how I accidentally did a little bit more cobble going towards the enchanting table which I think is actually really Really, really fitting because the closer you get to the enchanting table the more overgrown everything looks so I think that's like a really cool accidental detail but you can even see in spots like this see the one two three blocks that looks a little bit awkward so what I'm gonna do is maybe add cobble here and then put stone right there just to kind of break that up but yeah for the most part the texturing looks really good I really like it so we've got our basic path done and I think now you can kind of see that we're still missing something we're not quite there yet and what we're missing basically is different levels and different heights to add interest to the pathway because right now it's just completely flat. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to give more life and make the edges of the path look a little bit more natural. So with that, we're going to stick with the same palette of these blocks. We're going to add oak leaves to it to complement the tree and same with the spruce fence. We can add that and lanterns. So basically even just these blocks alone give you a lot of options, but we can also also add a few extra things like different types of slabs maintaining the theme of all of these blocks and keeping it consistent we still have more options that we could add like these blocks just to add different levels of height to what we're going to do around the landscaping of the path so with all of these things we can start placing them along the edges of the path just to add height and interest and to kind of box it in and make it look less flat and more interesting i keep looking at this and just thinking the mossy cobble would look so perfect with it but we'll end up replacing it when we finally find it but for now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start adding things like slabs to the edges of these bookshelves and I'm just gonna interchange with stone and cobblestone maybe we can even add some along the edges here add a staircase as well just to give a little bit of interest in terms of shape maybe even up on this trunk too just to kind of frame the enchanting table with a little bit of stone as well I think that'll look pretty good we can always add lanterns around here as well if we want so yeah we're just basically kind of framing the enchanting table with a little bit of stone just to connect it to the pathway that we have here and from here what we're pretty much going to do is we're going to start landscaping around the edge here so I'm going to take the blocks that I mentioned before and just kind of start interchangeably adding them to spots where I kind of feel like they would look good 
So I like to add pieces of fencing to corners like this. I just find it looks nicely boxed in when you do stuff like that. However, you don't want to do it on every single piece. So just here and there, and then maybe you can just have a couple pieces going straight like this. Then we can have a couple going out like that, zigzagging. You can also have them all different lengths as well. You can use four, you could use two. Just kind of randomize them so they don't all look the same. And I was thinking we could even use like cobblestone walls just to add as actually little lamp posts. I really like the way that they look. So we don't really need this one here anymore. And what you could even end up doing is you could always place fences a little bit further back as well. So it would allow you to add some extra items in here just to add a little bit more interest so everything's not completely flush with the path. So even here, for example, I could get rid of this part and just kind of extend it like this if I want. So then we can add something in here after. And then what I usually like to do is I like to frame the fences with blocks because they attach really nicely. And we can also add some half slabs here just to change up the height a bit because a lot of things are just on this level right now. So adding half slabs adds a little bit more interest in terms of height. Maybe add one right here. Just going along the path and adding these items as you go along. It's kind of random, but it's also kind of not. The whole goal is to just add visual interest, which is essentially just adding different heights and levels to your pathway, but you can kind of see how it's already starting to change and take shape. So we'll just keep doing that just every so often, seeing if something fits. And if it doesn't, like I don't really like that, we'll just get rid of it and we'll find something else for that spot. So then also we can add in some more oak leaves, kind of as like bushes, just in spots where I think they would look good. I think that it helps frame these blocks really nicely and adds a little bit more interest right here. Another really good item to have on pathways, I find that I use a lot is barrels. I don't think I'm going to use them for this pathway just because I already have a lot going on with these but that's also a really nice item I think that they look really cute I think we need a couple lampposts hanging around so maybe one here and in spots like this we can always add spruce trap doors what I like to do with spruce trap doors is they do look good like this on the ground when you just place them just like that but the problem is I find sometimes the height of them is just like a little bit too much so I like to dig out the ground before I place them and then place them like that so they're more flush. But they do look good like this sometimes. It's just a matter of preference and kind of the look that you're going for. And we can also start adding in our gravel. So the reason why I'm adding gravel underneath some of these fences is just because I find that if you have all of your fence posts sitting on just grass, they kind of begin to feel like they're just floating there and it looks unnatural in some ways. So I find that when you kind of interchange them with grass, the spruce and the gravel, it looks a little bit more natural and textured. So like I said before, just use your palette of blocks that we created and just use them to interchange between the two. And before you know it, you already have a path that's being laid out. It's busy, but because we have a palette in mind, they all kind of work with each other and kind of create more of a landscape rather than just looking like a bunch of random blocks scattered together. And I'm just kind of placing my leaves just kind of variously around. They just act as bushes pretty much. And it's also a personal preference, but if you feel like they look a little bit awkward just sitting here just as regular bushes you can kind of fancy them up a little bit with some spruce signs as well just to kind of make them look like they're sitting in a planter that's always something that you can do I like the look of them I think they look good and the spruce sign fits in theme with all of our other uh, palettes that we have going on so there's no issue there and don't forget to place some blocks back a bit and you can always fill in this spot with gravel or trap doors just like that and one more thing that I actually really wanted to add is I wanted to add a little bit of a wheat field in this patch. I find that wheat fields, especially like the light yellow color of them, really complements these blocks really well. They have really nice motion to them and they just kind of fill an empty, boring grass space with something nice and also useful if you ever need it. So I think we're gonna need a little bit more water. I'm gonna put a little bit here just in case because it's gonna be pretty big. We're gonna cover that up with a trap door and we're gonna make a little bit of a wheat field that just kind of goes along here and like we did with the path try to make it a little bit more of a natural shape kind of bending the shape of the wheat field and curving it in places that you can even have little pieces jutting out a little bit like that it's a little bit awkward right here maybe I can get some pieces of grass here instead and then let's just fill it up and we'll let it grow and we'll see what it looks like after okay last but not least I swear I'm almost done the last thing I want to add to it is actually some hanging lanterns above the
the enchanting table. I just think it would look really cool. So my idea is to have them kind of hang three in a row, maybe a little bit scattered and at different heights. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this one hang right here by maybe one chain, I think. That should be good. And I'm gonna place this one in behind just to give it a little bit more depth so they're not all hanging on the same line. So let's place this one right here. I'll use two chains, I think. Yeah, it'll hang lower. And then last but not least, this one. Let's see what it looks like if I just do one. These two are a little bit too much the same height. So I'm gonna get rid of this one real quick. And maybe I can get rid of its leaves. Place it here and it'll sit a little bit higher, just like that. All right, so I have them placed just like this and I think it looks really cool. Just adds that little pop of detail you have with like the chains and stuff like that. The only thing that we're kind of missing now is I want a few more droopy leaves kind of hanging around the enchanting table. So I'm just gonna place them out a little bit further, just like this. And I'm trying to place them a little bit randomly, kind of breaking the blocks in between and having them just kind of hang down. And we'll just do a couple around the edge here as well, just so it all looks cohesive. All right, I think we finished the enchanting table. And I think it honestly turned out really, really good. Um, it's pretty much exactly the look I was going for. I wanted it to look all magical, overgrown. I think we used the right materials, minus the fact that we still don't have mossy cobble. <laughs> We're gonna have to find that in the next episode. I think that's what's really gonna complete the look, but I think it was a success. We have a cute little pathway now that leads to it. So that's all done and it's all landscaped. All right, so I got two more bookshelves. So we have a complete enchanting table. All right, where should I place these? I think I'll put one here and maybe one, balance this out, maybe just here. And maybe what we'll do to add a little bit more visual interest behind it is we can actually probably add a little bit of a structure behind the enchanting table. I think it's missing a little bit extra structure on this side that we can always kind of change around later as well. I just wanted to give it more of a structured feel if that makes sense. And there, I just added a little bit more cobble around the edges just so the enchanting table looks like it's built into a structure rather than just sitting there. I kind of just messily placed the blocks as I see fit. I can always change it too if I don't like it, but I think this is like a really good little starting point to have and maybe later when we have more bookshelves we can add some more in behind just to give it a little bit more depth and stuff but for now just adding like a basic little shape around the enchanting table just kind of encloses it in a little bit more and makes it look a little bit more natural to the landscape and one thing we're actually missing to store our lapis we need a chest so I'm actually just gonna carve out this space real quickly fill it with some cobble for like a mini little path some stone to mix it up and we can just place a little chest right here put our lapis lapis in it and we're good to go. All right, now for real, it's time to test the enchanting table. All right, let's see what we got. So we got efficiency three and fortune two. Ooh, that's actually really good. So that's a pretty good enchantment. Um, Let's try some of my armor. I know some of it's not the greatest condition right now, but let's just see what we get for it. Blast protection three, awesome. What about this sword? Looting two and unbreaking two. So we're getting some good enchantments here. Kind of running out of XP though. But you know what? Some enchantment is honestly better than none. So we might as well just get this stuff done too. So why not? All right, so we got blast protection on this helmet that's nearly breaking. <laughs> some fire protection. Feather Falling, Fire Protection 1, and Death Strider. That's actually pretty good. That's not bad at all. Uh, we got our Iron Sword with Looting and Unbreaking. This Pickaxe with Efficiency 3 and Fortune 2, which is really good. I'm definitely really excited when we start branch mining and we can use this one to collect diamonds. We will get a ton more. So that's actually pretty good. All right, I have enchanted gear now. This is a major upgrade. This is so good. But yeah, I'm really happy that we actually ended up going with this build instead of another cave build. It was a little bit of a challenge, especially building a custom tree. They can be pretty tricky, but I hope I kind of explained it all to you well, and maybe you can go and make your own. And I hope you all give this build a shot. I think it looks really cool, and there's a lot that can now be done with this whole area, fitting in with a little bit of a fantasy theme that we've got going here. So yeah, 
yeah, I'm super happy that we got a really important component of this game done. We got enchanting that opens so many doors for us now. We're a lot better equipped to move on with many other projects in this game. Let me all know in the comments what you want to see me do in the next episode. There's tons and tons of things we could do. We could go exploring in caves again, start a branch mine. We can build a barn for our animals. We could build a storage room. We could explore the map a little bit more and see what's around. We could even begin landscaping and detailing around our house and also adding a lot of details that need to be done around the house itself. But yeah, there's tons of fun stuff that we can do. So let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. And I think that is it for today's episode. Thanks so much everybody for watching and I hope I gave good tips on how to build a custom tree and I hope you liked the build. And with that, I will see you all in the next episode. Bye!